If you are familiar with Elon Musk, you probably must have known his audacious attempt to bring planet Mars to mankind. The weird but brilliant and highly successful billionaire plans to send 1 million people to Mars by 2050 by launching three Starship rockets every day and creating a lot of jobs on the red planet of Mars. How he precisely plans to achieve this will be discussed in this video. We will also be exposing his journey across the years that brought him into making this bold move. Anybody who's followed Elon Musk across the years knows that he wants to be the first person to bring man to Mars. Today, we'll present you with his journey across the years to do precisely so. In 2002, he founded SpaceX, his rocket company. Musk was frustrated that NASA wasn't doing more to get people to Mars, and concerned that a backup plan for humanity wasn't in process for when Earth becomes an uninhabitable wasteland. Since then, SpaceX has developed several impressive aerospace systems. Falcon 1, Grasshopper, Falcon 9, Dragon, and Falcon Heavy. But Mars is a cold and almost airless rock, located an average of 140 million miles from Earth. Astounding ingenuity is required to land even a small spacecraft there today, let alone a giant spacecraft full of people and cargo in the future. Musk's plan to colonize Mars revolves around a large rocket, codenamed the BFR, which blasts a spaceship carrying up to 100 people into orbit before returning to the launch pad for an upright landing. The rocket then blasts off again carrying a fresh load of fuel for the transport ship. Next, the colonists depart for Mars. That's why SpaceX is increasing their amount of money and staff to build this space vehicle. During landing, 99% of the vehicle's energy will be shared by trawling through Mars's atmosphere, Musk said, before a final landing burn settles the vehicle onto the Martian surface. As for the booster itself, it is now shorter, smaller in width, and equipped with less engines. The fully reusable 387-foot tall system consists of two giant stages, a roughly 18-story tall Big Falcon spaceship and a Big Falcon booster. The booster will launch the spaceship on top towards space, then land itself for reuse. Musk has said the BFR spaceship is the hardest part of the system to get right, so that's where SpaceX focuses most of its energy. The company is building a BFR factory in the port of Los Angeles. While the facility is constructed, engineers are working under a nearby 20,000 square foot tent to build a prototype spaceship out of advanced carbon fiber materials. SpaceX is also meeting with NASA and other parties to workshop its Mars mission plans, though it still has a lot of work to figure out how to keep passengers safe from radiation, starvation, and themselves. 2018. Build a launch support facility in Boca Chica, Texas. SpaceX needs a place to test launch its spaceship prototype, and the southern tip of Texas gives them a few benefits. SpaceX can reasonably economically transport large rocket parts over water by barge from Los Angeles through the Panama Canal to Boca Chica. Otherwise, the parts would have to be flown or driven in a truck over land. Additionally, few people live in the area, which is a good thing as they are filling a gigantic experimental spaceship full of explosive liquids and lighting them on fire. The rockets can be launched over the Gulf of Mexico, posing less risk to people or objects on the ground. Musk said that the launch pad might not even be on land, it may be launched from a floating platform. Finally, Boca Chica is one of the most southern municipalities in the US. Getting as close to the equator as possible helps rockets save fuel since Earth's rotation adds significant speed to a launch. 2019. The Big Falcon Spaceship The President and Chief Operating Officer of SpaceX, Quinn Shotwell, has said the company wants to test launch a prototype ship in short hops, not reaching orbit, from southern Texas in late 2019. The goal would be to collect important data on the prototype to improve the next version. As with many early SpaceX test launches, the likelihood is high that there could be a rapid unscheduled disassembly, as Musk likes to call exploding rockets, 2020-21. Try to launch a full BFR and get a spaceship into orbit. During the Satellite 28 conference in March, Shotwell said the BFR should be orbital in 2020. However, Musk said there had been no decision on a time frame, adding that he wanted to pull off several uncrewed orbital test launches before putting any people on board. 2022. Launch two missions to Mars full of cargo and supplies, but no people. Musk has 2022 as the date for the launch of the first Big Falcon spaceship missions to Mars. Each ship would first fly into orbit around Earth, which would use up most of its fuel. Then, several other tanker spaceships would launch to fill the vehicle with enough fuel to reach Mars. It's unknown how many flights or how long this might take. Mars and Earth get close to each other about once every two years, creating windows of time when it's quicker to reach the planet. Because of that, the best months to launch would be the summer of 2022. Depending on how efficiently the Big Falcon spaceship can change its speed, it could take anywhere from a few months to almost a year to reach Mars. It would likely be landing in late 2022 or early 2023. 2022 to 23. 
land the first big Falcon spaceship on Mars. Musk wants the first spaceship to be full of cargo and machines that future missions would require. That stuff would be needed for humans to build facilities that can generate power, accumulate water, bottle up the thin Martian air, and turn those raw resources into methane fuel and oxygen for return launches back to Earth. Paul Worcester, SpaceX's principal Mars development engineer, said the first two uncrewed cargo missions would confirm the water resources in the locations that you're interested in, and then determine any landing hazards for future missions, and then start to put in place some of those infrastructures that you'll need. 2023. Launch the first people with the BFR and send them around the moon. Musk introduced the world to SpaceX's first space tourist hopeful, Yusaka Mezawa, a Japanese billionaire who was paying SpaceX an undisclosed amount, like hundreds of millions of dollars, to be the first passenger aboard the BFR. Mezawa purchased all the seats on the vehicle's spaceship and plans to pick six to eight artists from various disciplines to take the roughly week-long trip around the moon with him in 2023. That mission would be the ultimate proof that the BFR works. 2024. Blast people on the first human voyage to Mars. Assuming that the first supply, cargo and scouting missions go well, SpaceX would send one or two crews to Mars. Of the current mission plans, Worcester has said that each ship would carry at least 100 tons of supplies. By transporting far more supplies than any crew would need for a years-long Mars mission, SpaceX might avoid the need for advanced technologies that had otherwise be required to stay on Mars. 2025. Put boots on Mars. As with the first uncrewed missions to Mars, it could take perhaps six to nine months for crewed ships to reach the Red Planet. These first spaceships would most likely serve as homes for astronauts, Worcester said in August. It wouldn't be the most comfortable setup, but it might diminish mission complexity by eliminating the need to build Mars habitats immediately. 2028. Finish building Mars Base Alpha. When someone on Twitter asked Musk how long it'd take to build the first permanent Martian base, Musk said, Probably 2028. It will start with just the most elementary infrastructure, only a base to create some propellant, a power station, blast domes in which to grow crops, all of the sort of fundamentals without which you cannot survive. Perhaps the 2030s, construction of the first city on Mars. Many life support experts doubt that the necessary technologies will be ready for people to land on Mars and survive there in the 2020s, let alone building a permanent city for colonization shortly afterwards. So Musk aims to build a backup drive for humanity on the Red Planet. I hope people start to think of it as a real goal to which we should aspire, to establish a civilization on Mars, Musk said in 2017. This is not just about humanity, it's about all the life that we care about. Musk envisioned sending about 1 million people to Mars at about $200,000 per one-way ticket. He believes that price will be possible given the hypothetical reusability of the BFR. Musk doesn't think life on Mars would have to be bland either. Mars will need everything from iron foundries to pizza joints, he said. The 2100s onwards, terraform Mars into an Earth-like planet. In every job post, SpaceX says it's pursuing the ultimate goal of enabling human life on Mars. To that end, its website hosts an image of a rusty red planet morphing into an Earth-like world. The illustration is a nod to a hypothetical and speculative process called terraforming. Terraforming is a type of climate change, but deliberate and more rapid than what's happening on Earth right now. The idea is that Mars could be transformed into a warm, wet world, better suited for permanent human colonization if we could melt the planet's carbon dioxide rich ice caps. Mars has less than 1% of the atmospheric density at its surface compared with Earth. Mars had most of its air blown into space billions of years ago. Under those conditions, harmful space radiation doesn't get blocked, and people couldn't breathe outside a spacesuit or sealed colony. It's unknown whether terraforming could be done in a sustainable amount of time on Mars, since there may not be enough gases trapped in the poles to feed a cozy planetary atmosphere. NASA doubts it's possible at all. Plus, the effort might require a kind of powerful satellite that could generate a magnetic shield to protect against solar radiation that would otherwise blow away any human-manufactured atmosphere. The scenarios researchers have looked into don't really consider water or methane that may be trapped in the Martian ground. They also don't investigate whether any chemical-rich comets and asteroids could be redirected to strike Mars. Musk has even said nuking Mars might help. Experimenting with terraforming may be only one way to tell whether it's possible. Musk, or possibly his memory and legacy, might be the reason that this makes it happen in the distant future. As eccentric as he might be, we know Elon Musk is doing his best to turn what once seemed like a dream into a reality. At this point, only time can tell if he will be successful at doing so or not.